When I discovered I was autistic in my mid twenties and I started spending more time in the online autism community, I felt like I'd stepped into a little bit of a conflict, a disagreement, shall we say. It seems that in the eyes of many people, the autism mom is like, the final boss, if you will, the ultimate villain. The caricature version of the autism mom loves all things puzzle piece. She probably has it as a bumper sticker on her car. She probably has it as a tattoo on her forearm. Her child being autistic has become her whole personality. She probably films them having meltdowns and uploads them to TikTok. Or she makes TikToks ranting about how hard it is to parent an autistic child and then links her Amazon wish list in the description or how some sort of merch store with t-shirts, with inspirational quotes, maybe some puzzle pieces on everything, lots of primary colors. She's very sensitive to criticism and she probably gets into pretty frequent battles in the comment section. But then for this autism mom, the ultimate villain is the young, blue-haired, AFAB, TikToker autistic person who in the mind of the autism mom is wrongly appropriating the term autistic and seems fine actually. Everybody has anxiety. Who do they think they are? With their quirky alternative dress sense and their novelty earrings? They're making autism seem like just another quirky accessory. And the autism mom takes offense. This person who is seemingly so much less disabled than my child, who perhaps has excellent verbal ability, is arguing that autism is just a difference. And is maybe making jokes sometimes about the autistic experience. In the mind of the autism mom, they're skewing public perception away from higher support needs autistic people. And to make matters worse, this caricature of an autistic person comments frequently on videos uploaded by the autism mom, telling them they're wrong, criticizing their parenting. And if the autism mom ever says one slightly bad thing about autism, they'll be there to accuse them of hating their children and maybe even being abusive. So I've dipped my toe into this discussion, this conflict several times before. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video responding to an interview that Book Angel did with the mother of an autistic child and tried to dismantle some misinformation that was shared there. But today I wanna see if there's a way we can bridge the gap. Why can't we all just get along? I've been asked quite a few times recently to touch on the Jubilee Middle Ground discussion video. They featured Abby, a cast member from Love on the Spectrum, and then also her mom, Christine. And Christine said a few things that really upset a lot of people in the autistic community. A lot of people in the comment section were not happy. TikTok is like a war ground, a battleground for like the rudest, meanest, most judgmental people. And sadly, a percentage of them say they are on the spectrum. So I'm gonna touch on a few of those things within this video as well. But we'll get onto that a bit later. I'm gonna talk about four points of contention between some autistic people and some parents of autistic people online. Please note that I was being very silly with the intro and just describing extremes. Those do not describe actual people and most people are not chronically online and perhaps being chronically online is part of the problem. But who am I to say anything about that? Point of contention number one, support for autism speaks with a built-in perceived desire for a cure for autism. The stereotypical autism mom is in support of the puzzle piece laden charity Autism Speaks. It's not uncommon that you'll hear autistic people online refer to Autism Speaks as an autism hate group. Autism Speaks is trash balls. In 2009, which is way too recent for my liking, they produced this advert, I am autism. I am autism. Which effectively positioned autism as a disease. I work very quickly. I work faster than pediatric AIDS. As a demon who had stolen your child. I know where you live. And guess what? I live there too and was coming for your neighbor's child next and was plotting the demise of your marriage. I will make sure that your marriage fails. And even today, the following quote can be found on their website, on their page of do's and don'ts after an autism diagnosis. Autism is like a thief in many ways. It has been known to rob children of their childhoods. It can sometimes steal the joy and hope from parents. Autism has drained a lot of bank accounts and has ruined marriages, but it does not have to be that way. Don't let an autism diagnosis do those things to you. It's giving beware of autism autism, stay alert. It's not giving autism acceptance. Autism Speaks original mission was to find a cure for autism. They removed that from their mission statement in 2016. And then there's the whole vaccine thing. They say they're following CDC guidelines now. Autism Speaks is not against vaccines. We follow the CDC guidelines. But what Eileen Lam, who is the social media manager for Autism Speaks, she's also autistic herself and she has two autistic children. What she doesn't mention here though, and what I'm sure a lot of autistic people don't 
appreciate is that Autism Speaks did fund research into whether vaccines cause autism for a pretty long time. A senior executive apparently resigned in 2009, the same year of the advert. I am autism. Because she felt like they were wasting time and resources by continuing to research it. She said, the fact is, vaccines save lives, they don't cause autism. And at the time, Autism Speaks founder Bob Wright said that her resignation was disappointing and sad, and also said that it was possible that autism was caused by vaccines. But by 2014, they were strongly encouraging parents to vaccinate their children. In 2017, they made the definitive stance that vaccines don't cause autism. But I guess they just ran with it so long because families were frightened and people wanted that research and people were willing to fund it. And still occasionally, people try and push that narrative today. That's why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Ground News. Ground News is an app and website that helps you stay up to date on current events without becoming overwhelmed, while also making you fully aware of any bias that could affect the article you're reading. They take a data-driven approach to reading the news. For every story, you get a visual breakdown on political leanings, reliability, and ownership. For example, a new study attempted to link the COVID-19 vaccine to autism-like behaviors in rats for whatever that's worth. Ground News found 19 articles reporting on this, and this includes the original study so we can compare what the scientists said to the media narrative. On the bias distribution chart, we have a visual breakdown of sources covering the story. So 21% lean left and 64% lean right. Best of all, we can compare headlines. Articles from the left emphasize that claims that the COVID-19 vaccine causes autism are unfounded. There's a warning here that the study can't be generalized to humans. As I said, there were more reports on this story from the right, you can see nine articles here. This one focuses on how quickly the COVID vaccine was created, sowing doubt in its safety. And this headline from a low factuality source just outright states COVID vaccine causes autism in rats. Ground news can give you a full view of different perspectives, boosting your trust in what you see. In order to stay as non-partisan and factual as possible, ground news don't use any ads. So you can click my link in the description below and subscribe to get 30% off their unlimited access vantage plan, which is about six US dollars per month. So as I say, a cure for autism is out of the Autism Speaks mission statement, but they do continue to fund genetic research. They have a project called Missing, which is the world's largest whole genome database. It is a massive proposition to do thousands of genomes and then put them up in a cloud environment to allow researchers to look at that from around the world and study it. This is hosted in Google Cloud and in their words, made available to people who want to work with it. A lot of autistic people are very unhappy and wary of this. Autism Speaks state on their website that they don't support eugenics, but all of this data being available on a cloud like this does make it vulnerable to hacking. Now, I personally have a bit of a special interest in autism. There may be a few clues around here. I don't know if you've noticed. Just selfishly, I'd love more information about autism, about the different profiles, files about the different medical conditions it's connected to. We know we have a lot of hypermobility and things like that. And what if that information could lead to more reliable diagnosis? And what if that information could lead to a medication or something that could help with sensory sensitivities? In a utopia where everything is good and right, then maybe, but I acknowledge that that's not the world we live in. There was a study called Spectrum 10K. Researchers from the University of Cambridge aimed to investigate the genetic and environmental factors that contribute to autism and related physical and mental health conditions to better understand well-being in autistic people and their families. So again, they wanted 10,000 DNA samples from autistic people and from their families. And there was just so much backlash that it's had to be put on hold. And you can see why considering the history of autism, people would be nervous. Even Baron Cohen, who was set to lead the study came out and said, there's no way that we can ever say that a future political leader or scientist won't use the research for eugenics. But he also said, I think responsible scientists can speak out against that and say there are positive reasons for doing genetic research. You know, here's a library of DNA from a marginalized group, it does feel quite vulnerable. Researchers must make sure autistic people are meaningfully involved at every stage of the research, respond to their feedback, and make sure that all involved know exactly how their input will be used. And who knows, maybe if we can increase the level of autism acceptance, autistic people might feel more willing to contribute to things like Spectrum 10k. I think autistic people kind of need to feel like they're welcome in this world first. <laughs> You know, that, that might be the first step. I can see why a parent of a child who has comorbidities, like epilepsy, might find this 
quite frustrating. But I think autistic people just need to feel like the risks are minimized enough for the potential benefits of any research to be worth it. And of course, as the National Autistic Society emphasizes, many autistic people do feel like we prefer research to go towards things that can help us right now, supports. But I mean, back to the Autism Speaks issue, my personal view is that even if Autism Speaks are, you know, fine now as they, they claim to be, that's probably a, a video for another day. But even if that were the case, I'm not super impressed by their spending. A lot of money seems to go on salaries if you compare it to a charity like the National Autistic Society. So number two, the second point of contention, my personal favorite, and by that, I mean <laughs> my least favorite thing that parents of autistic children do probably, that is monetizing your autistic child, filming your child in distress and turning that into content. I'm not sure your salary being dependent on you posting videos and photographs of your child is always gonna lead you towards doing things that are in their best interest. You could even kind of convince yourself that it is in their best interest. And then what if you notice a certain type of content is getting more attention, getting more views? And what if that content is negative? A parent could think to themselves, well, it's the truth. It's raw and real. This is what everyday life is like in our household. And if I post this content, it will help other parents of autistic children to feel less alone. Maybe it'll even help some people to get their own children diagnosed. It's all in the name of autism awareness and autism awareness is a good cause, right? So I believe this was in 2022, but this controversial TikTok was posted to a TikTok account that now has 100,000 followers. I won't show any faces or say what the name of the account is, but the text on the TikTok read, the side of autism people don't see all because the child didn't get her own way. It's not always a happy house. Showing this has always said I'd keep it real. At one point, the child is picked up and thrown down onto a sofa by a man. In a response video, her mother states that he didn't throw her hard. But Ian didn't harm her in that video. He didn't throw her hard. But it kind of frightens me that you're willing to show somebody being physical with an autistic child in that way on TikTok. Like what is going on behind closed doors if you're thinking that's acceptable to share? I just can't imagine what it would be like like to have your most vulnerable moments shared online like that. It would be humiliating, it would be traumatizing. And as several people have pointed out, that content is there on the internet forever now. So your child is having a meltdown and your first thought is, let's record this and let's put this on the internet for a bunch of strangers to see, for this child's future classmates to see for people to see when this child is applying to university. And you can see her mom does try and justify it with just keeping it real. Maybe I shouldn't have posted it, but then if I hadn't have posted it, I wouldn't have been keeping it real, would I? And I've said from the start that I will keep everything real. And calls the people who disagreed with this content being shared haters, which is often a thing that you do see from the quote unquote autism moms. Everybody who disagrees is a hater. There's obviously been quite a lot of hate on it. I don't understand why you all hate so much. See a lot of the stuff starts to make me feel grateful in a way that I didn't have a diagnosis when I was a child. I think for some parents it can maybe make them start to see everything their child does through this negative lens of disorder, there's something wrong with them. Because there are videos of children doing quite normal things, like showing a little bit of resistance towards going to bed and things like that. I'm not undermining that obviously autistic people do have autistic meltdowns, but neurotypical children are not perfect either. We don't film neurotypical or non-autistic children when they're taking too long getting ready for school and say things like, this is tantrum awareness, this is parenting awareness, this is child rearing awareness. There are unfortunately so many TikToks like this and often the filming of the meltdown or the aftermath of the meltdown seems to kind of form part of a punishment for the autistic person. Like, look, I'm gonna show everybody what you've done. So parents who do upload their autistic kids a lot, particularly if they're very high support needs autistic kids, they do have some comebacks that I think are maybe a little bit more worth entertaining than like the whole, I'm just being raw, I'm just being real thing. They say, what if only those autistic people who are able to consent are represented on social media or in any media? Won't we just be seeing one type of autistic person? Not that every autistic person is the same, we'd still be seeing a lot of different types of autistic people, but we'll maybe be missing a lot of the spectrum. And is that representation not vital? I feel very strongly that the complaints by mildly affected autistic adults, don't like that language at all, that parents are violating their kids' privacy by writing about 
about them represent the most insidious form of censorship, said one mom. Severely autistic individuals don't have the capacity to consent, therefore parents are forbidden to speak about them, therefore the only voice the public is supposed to hear is that of autistic adults who claim to speak for the entire spectrum. In defence of autistic adults, we do tend to say the whole of you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person thing an awful lot, but there certainly are some people who do act kind of like their experience of being autistic is everyone's experience, or just at least sometimes phrase things as if they might think that way. So I looked into what happens in a medical setting if somebody is unable to consent. If there is truly absolutely no way that they can consent, then somebody close to them can make decisions on their behalf, but it must be in their best interests. Now obviously this is subjective and you will then get parents who will argue that autism awareness is in their child's best interests. I think as humans we do have a tendency to kind of decide what we'd like to do and then try and moralise it afterwards and mould our ethics to fit the decision that we've kind of already made about how we'd like to do things. I think if it were me trying to make that choice I'd try and consider whether, you know, if one day I was unable to consent, would I want my highs and my lows to be posted on social media? And I think the answer is no. <laughs> I'm not hoping for a dementia with Meg account one day, Meg has dementia, now what? I'd probably still be trying to make videos for this channel myself and everyone would be like, Meg calm down, it's fine, Love on the Spectrum aired for the last time in 2030, let's just go for a walk, let's have a cup of tea, it's all gonna be okay. I think you need to be clear and kind of honest with yourself, with your goals with sharing the content as well. If a meltdown is going on TikTok, for awareness. Although it may help some parents to feel less alone, you're probably also unfortunately creating a space for ableism for voyeuristic viewers who do not respect your child. I have seen the most disgusting comment sections, particularly on TikTok. It can be really bad. What is achieved by this for an autistic person? I also want to say that I don't think that parents of autistic children should be banned from speaking out about the difficulties of raising an autistic child, just like I don't think any parent should be banned from speaking out about the difficulties about parenting. Just maybe sometimes that is better done in closed groups, like Facebook groups. You're not gonna get any nasty people in the comments that way. Well, if it's Facebook, you still might, but it, it should be less so. And there might be local groups and maybe you could actually meet up with people who understand your situation. That might be a better way to feel supported than like, you know, arguing over TikTok with the haters, you know? Your child is gonna grow up someday and see this, one mother of an autistic child said. Is it really healthy you're letting them know they were a burden to you? Even if you don't think they'll ever grow up to understand what a TikTok is, maybe they'll never care what you post on TikTok. In that case, it would be really kind for parents of autistic people to consider the fact that other autistic people will see it, they will understand and they will care. Number three, the third disagreement between autism mums and autistic people, gatekeeping autism or some parents of autistic children claiming you are not autistic enough. This came up a load in the video that I reacted to with book Angel and the Autism Mum. I'm no, going to me. gatekeep autism where I don't yeah. think if you're yeah. awkward or if you think yeah. different or if you can't be in a social room that you have autism. Amber really took offence when people who she perceived to be individuals who would have previously been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome when she saw those people using the term autistic. And then she later went on to reveal that she didn't actually think these people were autistic at all, despite the fact that Asperger's syndrome was always a type of autism. And Christine, Abby's mom, seems like she might agree with Amber in this Jubilee Middle Ground video. So the first prompt was, I find the word disabled offensive. What do you think of that word disabled? Does it bother you? Disabled? Um, for me, the kind of autism I have is a uh, communication disorder. You'll notice Abby's mom will say the kind of autism we have, or that's not our kind of autism. She was so in her own world, which is her kind of autism. As if to separate Abby's autism and Abby from other types of autistic people. Like, for example, when I was a little girl, I walked around in circles talking to myself. I wanted to join the conversation, but I didn't know how, and my brain wouldn't do what I was telling it to do. I've had 20 20 years of speech therapy, 15 years of occupational therapy to be able to talk like everyone else to get where I am today. So you think it's okay to use the word disability because it helps people understand mm -hmm. how hard you've worked. Mm -hmm. So I have the same reaction to Aiden, the guy in the pink here. I'm pretty sure I have videos on my channel where I basically kind of say the same thing. Some of my early videos when I was talking about traits of autism. When I was small, when I was in nursery, I was in a world of my 
go and just walked around the edge of the playground and flapped my hands and I saw the other children integrating and playing and doing all the things that children do and I had absolutely no idea how to be involved with it at all. I didn't really know if I wanted to be involved. It was really confusing. And me saying I relate to Abby here, as Aiden does, I'm not trying to equate my experience to hers. And maybe this is where some autism parents get mixed up. I just love the way she articulates it here. It's brilliant. When I first saw the Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid, I really understood Ariel and she, she inspired me. She, Ariel was my inspiration because it's just like how where she wanted to be with the humans and I wanted to be with the neurotypical people, just like that and when Ariel became human she couldn't talk that's how I felt. And again, I think it's fine for autistic people like me who didn't have any speech therapy. I think it's fine for us to relate to parts of Abby's story and to find connection. That's exactly the kind of autism I have too, Abby. <gasps> really? Yeah, except I never verbalized it like you did. Here, Abby's mom uses the term neurodifferent to describe Ian. Because this autism word and spectrum now has successful people and writers yeah. who are neurodifferent <laughs> and people who have had 20 years of speech therapy. It's confusing. From what I've seen here, Ian seems like a very sensitive guy and he goes on later to talk about his struggle with autistic masking, which is essentially trying to cover up the fact that you're autistic every day in order to fit in. The mask I've had to put on has really been kind of like cemented onto my face. <laughs> and like my autistic self is like something I'm still trying to chip away at. Which is an experience many of us can relate to. And he also talks about how he feels like there are just no services for autistic adults aside from things like speech therapy. There are no services really for adults. <laughs> and I that's a problem, at least like besides like ther speech therapies and stuff like that. I the phrase neurodifferent seems very dismissive. Neurodifferent? There's this implication that because he's successful, he's fine actually. And I just don't think that's necessary. You can tell Abby's story without diminishing anybody else's. And I doubt Christine, Abby's mom, does know very much about his story because he doesn't share an awful lot here. She's never met him before and she also doesn't ask him. And you know what? Maybe Ian doesn't want to air his dirty laundry on an episode of Jubilee and that's fine. An autistic person shouldn't have to prove how autistic they are in order to be taken seriously. I can't imagine how annoyed Abby's mom would be if somebody found their TikTok, they looked at some clips of Abby swimming, of Abby singing karaoke, of Abby going on water slides, of Abby doing speeches, of Abby having a successful relationship, a partner that she found on a reality TV show, you know? How would, annoyed would she feel if somebody turned around and said, I think your daughter's too successful to be autistic. My kid will never be able to do or understand those things. That's not the type of autism we have. Abby's just a bit neurodifferent, you know? And there is sitting within this group, the father of an autistic child who sounds like he's very high support needs and is also non-speaking. He doesn't understand that I'm going to do this. He doesn't understand what autism is. Imagine if he turned around and was like, well, that's not our type of autism. You know, this competitiveness is just kind of toxic and unnecessary. There's also this suggestion from many autism moms that the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria now includes too many conventionally successful people. The term spectrum keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Abby's mom alludes to this on Abby's website too. But the very first person diagnosed as autistic in 1943, Donald Triplett, he had a bachelor's degree in French and he worked as a banker. I'd just love to know what type of autism Abby's mom would think he had. Does he have the same type of autism as Abby? Was he worthy of an autism diagnosis despite his bachelor's degree in French? I guess it's trending to be autistic oh, and I'm very worried be... about this. Yeah. It's trending. Magic with Thomas. Well, well what I'd like to say is if you have sensory issues, you're now called autistic. I grew up with a brother who had sensory issues. He is not autistic. But now you're clumped in with that. In 2013, the way autism was labeled did change quite drastically. A bunch of different labels that had still been considered part of the autism spectrum prior to that, such as Asperger's syndrome, were merged together to create autism spectrum disorder. And part of the reason was that they couldn't find consistent biological markers between Asperger's syndrome and the old diagnostic label autistic disorder. The actual criteria has not really changed that much. It still basically sums up the same traits. It's just that instead of these different labels, we now just have levels of support needs. And the DSM-5 does state that these support needs may fluctuate throughout a person's life as well, which I like. Sometimes they make it sound like the DSM-5 changed the 
the wording to say something like all introverts are actually autistic. If you've ever experienced a sensory issue once in your life, if you've ever worn a sock and it's got wet and you've not liked the experience, then you're autistic. I've sat at parties with Asperger kids, which I know you're not supposed to say that word, but the intelligence in an Asperger person is such a gift. I learned all about astronomy from this one kid in two hours and his mother nice. was saying, leave the nice lady alone. And I was like, no, please let him stay with me. Because that's because I'm coming from that place of looking at neurodiversity, autism, Asperger's in, in a different way. I don't understand the insistence on clinging to this Asperger's label, particularly when you sprinkle in the fact that it was connected to an Austrian physician who was complicit with the Nazis. So then what is the representation? If there's literally not three levels, but 50 levels yeah. of functioning. 50 levels of it's, functioning? Yeah, it's, it's confusing. Right, like, like on it's... TikTok, you'll see like someone with 8 million followers on TikTok who's in a comedian who's the funniest person ever and who an, I'm an amazing fan of is, is looking for an autism diagnosis at 35 with a college degree and two kids and you go, oh, I wonder what that is for them because did you have any speech therapy? What, what is it and why do you feel you need that diagnosis? But and this seems to be the issue with a lot of parents of autistic children. They take their own experience with their own child and they try and apply it to everyone. Not every autistic person will require speech therapy or will have speech therapy. I don't understand why we need to dismiss people completely. What other label are people supposed to use? Neurodifferent? Would that have helped me to get accommodations at school when I had to drop out at age 17? Again, I wonder how Abby's mum would feel if someone came along and doubted Abby's diagnosis based on a TikTok, a tiny short TikTok that came up on their For You page. And guess what they did? I found several threads of people discussing how they thought Abby is faking autism. Obviously this is ridiculous and I don't condone this behaviour. I think this whole fake claiming thing is stupid and it needs to stop. People saying that is so unfair to Abby because yes she is an autistic person who has worked really hard to come across as well as she does now and to speak as well as she does now and that's how a lot of us feel even if we didn't have speech therapy. It took a lot of effort and energy to come across as quote unquote normal as we do now. This is maybe not how we were when we were children. I definitely have have seen some people on social media claim that autism is not a disability, some people say it's a difference, and I can see how a parent of a child with a lot of support needs could see that and kind of take issue with it. But what I do think is just because somebody doesn't identify as disabled and doesn't want to use that label for themselves doesn't mean they're not disabled. They may just prefer not to think about themselves that way for self-esteem reasons. Unfortunately, disability is really stigmatized in our society and maybe as that changes over time, more people will feel comfortable with coming forward as people kind of are now on social media and it's causing a lot of pushback, but more people might feel comfortable to come forward and say, yes, I actually do need help. I actually do need support. I am struggling in this area and we can work towards a more inclusive society. At the end of the day, it is up to an individual though how they want to label themselves and I'm sure there are many autistic people who would be considered higher support needs who also don't consider themselves disabled. Maybe they just dislike that word, maybe they just don't like to see themselves that way. Doesn't mean they're not autistic though. I really like this comment on Reddit. So there was a post where someone had said autism is a disability, to say otherwise is harmful. And then someone said, frankly, while it is ableism when people people refuse to believe that it can be disabling, that doesn't mean there aren't advantages to accepting that autism is a fundamental part of who you are and it's okay to be proud of what makes you unique and what makes you you, even if it comes with challenges. The diagnostic criteria focuses on the negative. It is good for your mental health to practice acceptance and appreciation of yourself and who you are as a person, even if you find it hard at times. The joys of delving into a special interest, the soothing calm of stimming, the ability to notice small details in life are all things that come from autism that I am grateful for and I think that is beautiful worded and yeah all of those are things that I'm grateful for as well. One thing that is really clear in this Jubilee video is that autistic people with different presentations can really connect. Some people on the spectrum tend to rock back and forth and flop their hands. And that's a stem. Oh, why you gotta that's call me that stem. out? I was doing that just now. <laughs> no, literally I've been holding my hands like but this. But that's, this time. That's, <laughs> that's good. At the end of the day I think a lot of this upset and anger stems from parents of autistic children feeling like there is a lack of support and then maybe kind of misdirecting that towards other autistic people. I have cried more hours on the phone trying to get accommodations and programs going for her after 18 
pain than I did when she was a, a younger kid. Which leads me on to point number four. Autism moms makes their child's diagnosis their whole personality. And this is where I think I empathize most with autism moms or just parents of autistic children. That's not your identity. That's your child. You're weird. Okay, this person has really great eye makeup and I love their editing, but I do disagree with this point. If you're a single mom or parent, if you can't find a suitable school placement for your child, if you are only offered 48 hours of respite care a year, as one parent stated, how are you not supposed to make your child's diagnosis your whole personality? If you have a high support needs autistic child, you live and breathe caring for them. I'm sure many of these moms would love to have a hobby, would love to be able to take days off sometimes, but they can't. It has become their whole life, it has to be. Some autistic children need somebody with them 24 seven in order to stay safe. My sexism radar starts to go off a little bit when I hear things like this too, because it's never autism dads, it's always autism moms. Where are the autism dads? There is actually a great, lovely autism dad in this Jubilee video, he's he's great. I talk to him about everything. People always tell me when they find out he's nonverbal, they're like, you should talk to him. I'm like, I talk to him more than I talk to anybody else on earth, like it's constant. There's things he doesn't understand, like fundamental things that he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand that I'm going to do this, he doesn't understand what autism is. He doesn't understand things like that. But I tell him. When I relate to my son, what I try to do is I try to put myself in his shoes. So I write a blog about him. I try to do autism appreciation, I call it, where I talk about the positives of autism and how he's a great kid, not despite autism, but in many ways because of autism. He seems really, really loving and caring. But in general, mostly we're hearing about autism moms because most of the time it will be women who will be giving up their careers to care for their autistic children. I never liked the idea that any parent should not be allowed to share negatives about parenting. I think that gives like toxic positivity vibes. It isn't always perfect, doesn't mean you hate your child, it just means that everybody's human. Sometimes, you know, we need to talk things through, we need to maybe vent a little bit. As I say, probably better to not do this on TikTok. <laughs> Closed groups are probably a better space for this. In theory, you could become a carer for a loved one at anytime somebody in your life could become disabled and you could need to care for them. I love my family and I think I would step up, but it doesn't mean that that would be easy for me all the time. You know, if I wasn't able to do my work, I'd be so sad about that. And I'm sure autistic people can really relate to that, particularly if you work around your special interest, that would be really difficult. The knock of not having that second income, even though in the UK you can access some supports, it's not gonna make up for the income that you've lost. If you just look through BBC News, you just see constant stories of how autistic people and their families are being failed again and again and again. There is so much that needs to be done. Like, no wonder so many parents of autistic children are frustrated. They need more help. And I think that will definitely help us on our pathway towards autism acceptance. Obviously, there are parents out there that are abusive, that never should have had any child, that's not the people who I'm talking about here. As an autistic person, I find it somewhat offensive when people say that I'm making autism my whole personality, you know? I don't think we should be saying that about anybody else. And you know what, there probably are some parents of autistic children who are undiagnosed autistic themselves and maybe it's become a bit of a special interest for them. I definitely had a special interest in parenting with my son for a while there, for sure. And I don't think that somebody being autistic necessarily means that they would know exactly how to perfectly parent an autistic child, you know? When you are a parent advice from people, particularly people don't have children themselves, it can be really annoying. I do think there is value in parents of autistic children listening to autistic adults for sure. It is thanks to autistic scholars, many of whom may be considered lowest support needs autistic people, but it's thanks to them that we understand things like stimming is soothing. Thanks to autistic scholars, we're learning more about autistic inertia, autistic burnout, and the theory of monotropism, which I really, really love, was created by autistic people. Monotropism potentially offers an explanation for why so some autistic people are non-speaking. Focusing on our shared experiences of the world, I believe will bring us closer more quickly to our shared goal of healthier, happier lives for all autistic people and their families. I don't know, maybe I'm just being too optimistic, but I do think with both sides, maybe we just need a little bit more respect, a little bit more assuming good intent. If you would like to see more videos like this one, you can support me over on Patreon. My lowest tier is four US dollars a month. And if you join that tier, you can join the Discord community where you can chat to other neurodivergent people, other people who might suspect that they are neurodivergent as well. You don't have to have a diagnosis. There's no gatekeeping at the door. 
door, it's fine. It's just a really, really lovely space. And then I also make two exclusive videos over there every month. So I do one advice video where people send in their problems. And then I also do a reaction video too. I think I'm gonna be reviewing Orion Kelly's book as the next one. But I also have one where I reacted to this documentary about a school just for autistic girls. It made me cry numerous times. It was lovely though. And if you haven't seen the video where I reacted to Buck Angel's interview with the autism mom Amber, I'll leave that linked down below. And if you would like to try out Ground News, you can click my link in the description to get 30% off their Vantage plan, which is around six US dollars. Thank you so much. Bye.